Good evening. The Lord be with you this, the, commem or, the Holy Cross Day. Uh, Holy Cross Day uh, is on September 14th, which is today. And so that is the reason for the color red. Uh, the order of service is divine service setting three. And our opening hymn is 837, Lift High the Cross. We stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross that he might bear the sins of the world and draw all people to himself. Grant that we who glory in his death for our redemption may faithfully heed his call to bear the cross and follow him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament for Holy Cross Day is written in Numbers, the 21st chapter. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? 
For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the first chapter. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews dem demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory be to thee, O oh Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world, will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from, came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there heard it, and, and heard it said that it, was thun that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come, from your, has come for your sake not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Yes, indeed, we wish to see Jesus. What greater desire is there than this? In him, all our troubles are erased, our sickness is healed, our pains made bearable, and our life livable. We turn to Jesus. We turn to his glory, we look to him for relief, and in him we have it. Yet it isn't long before Jesus becomes boring. With him, it's the same thing, day in and day out, week after week. We want something more, we get dissatisfied. Something different needs to be ours. The solid meat and potatoes aren't good enough anymore. What God has for us is despised, and thus God is despised too. A good question for us to ask ourselves is which God do you wish to have? Which Jesus do you wish to see? Jesus' answer to the Greeks, as well as to us, is revealing. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. This is the Jesus we need. It is the Jesus that we are indeed given. But it is the, is, but is it the Jesus that we want? Well, most certainly not. You see, the old Adam, the old man in us all, doesn't want this kind of Jesus. We want the Jesus that is powerful, almighty, and glorious. Now, certainly, Jesus is all these things. But it is how he exercises these attributes that we don't like. So often... The glorious Jesus doesn't look too glorious at all, for his glory is hidden. And it is hidden in the despised things of this world. In the wilderness, following God's deliverance from Egypt and the Red Sea, the Israelites, of all things, complained. It didn't matter that they were still alive, that they could care less about that. God's manna and quail got old, and what he had done, forgotten. What God had provided got stale in the mouth of his chosen. They had fallen into unbelief. Instead of trusting, turning to God in faith, they turned to themselves and their own stomachs. So God put to death what they trusted in, their life. Yes, he sent the fiery serpents. He punished them for their good. He disciplined them. And in response, he brought them to repentance. They repented of their sin, their complaining, their idolatry. And then he provided their deliverance, which came in the form of a bronze serpent the image of the very thing that killed them. God's promise that anyone who looked at the bronze serpent would live served as the object of their faith. And it was an object that gave them deliverance even though what they asked for really wasn't given to them. The serpents remained. They weren't taken away. Instead, he was given to them. His word, his promise, his deliverance. And Jesus does the same for us when he tells us what kind of Jesus he will be. He is the Jesus who is crucified and dies. He is the Jesus who is killed. He is the Jesus who becomes one of us he is the one who takes our flesh and blood. Yes, the very flesh that hungers for the things, it has not been given. 
He takes on our flesh, the flesh that has fallen into the image of the fallen destroyer, the serpent of hell. His flesh, born of woman, is without sin, however. For his father is not of this world, of this fallen flesh, it is of God. And so the flesh that he has is unique. He is completely man and completely God. God's glory is hidden in what we see and experience as not good. But Jesus takes on this flesh to redeem it, to pay the price. In our flesh, he becomes the one who is bitten. Bitten by the serpent. He is the one who suffers death. As he stomps on the head of the serpent, the fang pricks his own heel, and he dies. But there was no complaint on his lips. No, he was faithful. He trusted the Father in all things. Even in his death, he said so himself, that it was for this reason that he came into the world, this hour, the hour of his crucifixion. He was perfect, something we cannot do. When Jesus died, he died for us and our complaint, our unbelief. He became our sin, and like the bronze serpent on the pole, Jesus was raised up upon the cross of Calvary. He is the image of all that we have become. He is our bronze serpent, but instead of bronze, he was covered in the crimson of his own blood. He died for you and for your salvation. Behold and live. Holy Cross Day is not so much about a piece of wood and a few nails. This day is about Jesus and what he has done for you on the cross. This day is about who Jesus is and who he is for you. When you wish to see Jesus, this is your Jesus, the crucified one, the one who said, it is finished in your place. When you wish to see Jesus, here he is. Those who look to him will be saved. For in his it is finished, in Jesus dead on the cross, your enemy, the devil, the world, and this flesh is put to an end. He is, his head is crushed, his bite taken away. When you look to Jesus on the cross, you see your sins and its price, the death of the innocent God-man. It brings great remorse to your heart, at least it should and even a tear to your eye. Weeping and wailing, in fact. For it is on that cross that your flesh and blood went and was put to death in Jesus, killed by God and his wrath. This is your good. This is the ransom paid for you. It is the icon raised up for all the world to see. It is what draws all people to Jesus. And there is no other God. There's no other Jesus than this one. As Christians, it would serve us well to join with St. Paul in saying, I desire to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified. This is the Jesus who saves and sustains us. This is the Jesus who changes us. When we look to Jesus on the cross, we see who we are, but we also see who he, he has made us to be. He has taken our serpent-like flesh, died in it, and was buried in it, and was raised again in it. In his resurrection, however, the serpent is no more. His head has been crushed once for all. What remains is life. Life under the cross. You and I are called to take up our crosses and follow him. This you do in faith. 
You hear God's word, his promises accomplished and finished on the cross, and you believe them. You remember your baptism where the water of Jesus' side drowned you to life. And his name is given to you, placed upon you, marking you as his chosen. You feed on the fruits of his tree, the tree of life, and it's every good, as you eat the very body and blood of Jesus, the very body and blood that was sacrificed on Calvary's cross, the very body and blood that rose again on the, new, on the third day. It is that body that guarantees the same for you. So, sir, we wish to see Jesus, and so Jesus answers, here I am. The same thing, day in and day out, week after week, and it is good for you. I never change, he says. I am the one who loves you. I did not love my own life, but I gave it up for you, for all of you, to forgive you, to restore you. I am your everything. Nothing else will do in me and from me. You will have all that you need. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you desire everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Grant that by the preaching of your gospel, we may be given the wisdom that leads to salvation. By the working of your Holy Spirit, keep us attentive to all the teachings of your word. Enlighten our minds, control our wills, and purify our affections. Let your word be a light for our path, that neither the pleasures nor the honors nor the pains of this life may turn away our thoughts from the fullness of life that is found only in you. Enable us in sincerity of heart to follow you, the only true God. By your holy word, enlighten all who are in error, doubt, or temptation with the sure and certain knowledge of your truth, that all who live in sin may be led to repentance. Show mercy and grace to all those suffering any distress, to those who are sick or hospitalized, and to those facing death. Let them know the sure comfort of your holy word. We commit ourselves and all for whom we pray to your fatherly care and benediction. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power. Direct us by your, your spirit that we may daily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior until we shall stand before you in the joy of everlasting glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent, who overcame by the tree of the garden, might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that is taken away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that is taken away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that is taken away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The body of Christ is given for you. 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 The body of Christ is true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, who have this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. We stand. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. 
for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to light the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.